All right, so uh, moving on to part two. Um, I had to take care of something here at the house. So let's see, um, this week's deals. Um, so those of you that are gamblers, um, whether it be at a casino, whether it be on a cruise ship, et cetera, um, you are probably gonna get uh, some offers. And um, just like I was talking about in part one, that actually paid for the hotel in um, Las Vegas. In addition to that, um, I had to push them a little bit and I'll, I'll get into that here in a second, but uh, there was a tier match offer and I didn't get a chance right here before the episode. Yeah, between MGM resorts, celebrity cruises and Royal Caribbean cruises, where if you have a certain tier with the cruise line and, and my example, we have a select tier with a celebrity who have been on quite a few cruises, what MGM does there is they match you over to their gold status. And in 2023, what MGM did with their gold status is uh, one of the key things, well, two key things, is they waived uh, resort fees. So if you've ever been to Las Vegas, sometimes you'll get a deal on a hotel room in Las Vegas, but then they're gonna tack on a resort fee. Some of those are getting up into the 40s and $50 a night. So as I mentioned in part one there, we uh, got a free, well, actually, okay, let me technically, one of the nights was like $39.50 and then some local tax on that. But for four nights in Vegas, no resort fees. We're at New York, New York. And uh, they did go ahead and do that tier match, but they did not offer that resort fee. That was something new that MGM added in 2023. So I went over to the rewards desk when we got you know checked in to park MGM, and so like, well, that's kind of odd. Uh, I gave it a day. I think it went back was it the next day or later, the same day. It was an, a different lady. I asked. I you know, had all the documentation from the, the stuff at Celebrity. And I said, well, we're not doing tier matches. I said, well, mm, that, that there's some, we're going to be here four days. It's going to be some resort fees. If it wasn't that, I wouldn't really push the issue. I, I'd like to speak to your man. Well, she's going to tell you the same thing. No, I'd like to speak to her, please. Okay, uh, I'll hold a minute, I'll try to find her. So she went over there, you know, stood there for a minute, they were talking, and she came back and she goes, well, she's gonna do it for you. So if you are nice, the little Southern gentleman that I am, and a little persistent, and uh, and again, I, I told her, I said the, the biggest reason was for, you know, what you said in writing. And, um, and honestly, if they wouldn't have done it, I would have, you know, fought the credit card charge when we got home. And you know they can pay the fees related with that. So I was a little bit you know, peeved about it, but in the end, they, they did what I wanted them to do. So you know, uh, read the fine prints if, if you want to be um, you know picky about it and uh, and go from there. But um, so that that tier match, I, I don't know. I'm going to have an opportunity to take advantage of it again this month. They technically expired out again, but I'll I'll be curious to go back out there and make sure now. There is a related story. So MGM and Marriott, so MGM Resorts and the huge Marriott property, uh, you know, a hotel or hotelier, I think you're saying that right. They have a partnership that is pending. I think it was supposed to happen in 2023, but a, a number of months ago, you might remember that the hackers got Vegas, both MGM and Caesars. And it looks like that got Marriott a little bit scared. And, uh, the partnership was pushed off into this year. So uh, maybe that was also part of why they were trying to do it. And, and I guess also the tier match, um, I guess when they look at it, uh, a lot of people coming by, because when, when they do the tier matches out in Vegas, I've, I've seen this a couple of times, they have a whole binder of all the, the program details. And uh, I guess it's a little bit of extra work for them, uh, I guess. Um, 
And so I guess they were looking at it. Well, the tier matches are only going to go through the end of January. Why really fool with it now? You know, when you could come back or whatever. But so, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, so so we got that. Um, so again, uh, we'll see what uh, what that has. So I'll also see I should be so I, I, you know going back to the Marriott partnership. I'm platinum with them now. I don't know what they're going to do. I think I'm lifetime gold with Marriott. So we'll see where all of these gold, silvers, everything, you know, plays out um, and status matches and, you know, what kind of offers that brings. Other offers. So um, I am still getting casino offers from Carnival, Princess, and Celebrity. Um, there were a few more, um, more, uh, rich offers coming in from Celebrity. They do have a couple more sailings where they were offering that free interior cabin. Um, that's the one that prompted me to, you know, go on the cruise for my birthday. But the one that jumped out at me recently, and you've got the link over at uh, my great offer, the Facebook page, um, it was a carnival family feud game that uh, honestly dad and stepmom would probably enjoy, but Carnival did not give me as good a deal as Celebrity did. <laughs> so, um, you know, Family Feud is not quite the game show that uh, uh, you would find on a celebrity cruise ship, if you know the difference between the type of demographics there, but uh, it would be fun, you know, for uh, a dad and, you know, step on to see there. But uh, maybe on a future cruise, we'll, we'll see how this one goes first. I'm also not taking them on a long one. It's just that short four-nighter, just to make sure they like it, and we go from there. Other deals and offers out there. Uh, Chase, American Express, there are all kinds of offers. Air Canada, um, uh, ITA Air. Um, I even took advantage of one from JetBlue last year. Um, you know, there are hotel offers. So, um, you know, if, if you've got a trip in the works, you know, uh, may, it may not hurt to go out and see what kind of offers are out there, even for entertainment. So I do have an Amex Platinum card that pays for most of the Sirius XM and some of the Disney membership every month that we have. Uh, over on the Chase side, there have been some interesting offers for uh, cell phone plans. Uh, even the Mint service that I have right now uh, was um, pretty heavily discounted uh, because of an Amex offer. So, um, you know, th these things can really save you some money uh, if you want to go out in, in a kind of extreme coupon there. Also this week, uh, there was a winter um, travel offer, I think for uh, stuff booked through about March or so. Um, if you have existing uh, things that are booked, airline tickets, you did not book the basic economy, um, th those are changeable. And I was able to get about a hundred and some odd dollars back uh, as a future credit with Jeff Liu on the same exact flights for, for uh, me, dad, and stepmom to get down to Fort Lauderdale in March for the cruise. Be sure to check those out and, uh, and, and you know, pocket those savings when you can. And, uh, and definitely don't leave the um, any extra you know, miles on the table and save that money there. All right, so the upgrade fund. Um, as I always say, pay your bills before you help me pay mine, but we do have the Patreon link. Um, I did put a uh, little coffee pint glass out there, and uh, even the T-shirt that I'm wearing uh, is uh, available for purchase if uh, you want some merch out there. And... Over the past couple of days, I'm actually going to dinner with a couple of guys here from Radio Tucker. Tomorrow evening, I'm going to pitch an idea to possibly franchise Radio Tucker into a new idea. We'll see what happens with this. But I was talking with a, um, a friend and uh, something new for Atlanta that I don't know if anybody else is quite doing this yet. So stay tuned, literally, for that, and we'll see if that actually works out. And lastly, the feedback. I uh, always welcome and love uh, chatting about the previous episodes and, uh, and uh, going back and, and making sure. I love to make the show interactive and, uh, and so forth. You can comment here. So you can uh, reach out directly. Um, you've got my email address, robert at peachnews.co. But um, a, a good friend of mine that still works in aviation has been in it quite some time. It was a little bit, I guess, surprising to me that he had never heard of Penny from the Great British Air. Uh, there's a show over in the UK called Little Britain, and I believe it comes on BBC One, if I'm not mistaken. I've, I've never actually seen the show 
you know, aired in its normal time slot. You know, as a uh, British person, I've only seen YouTube clips, but the two that I really enjoy is the one of Penny. And so Penny is dressed in drag as a flight attendant for Great British Air. And Penny does not like working economy class or coach. So there's a couple of skits out there where she has to work coach and she puts on her gloves and her mask and, you know, she uh, spends as little time in, in, in the back as possible. Um, there's, I, I believe the same guy actually does uh, the, the computer say no skits. So I actually use that uh, line uh, quite a good bit with, uh, with my day job as well. So, um, you know, check those out just if you have a similar line of, uh, 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 you know, dark humor, um, as the uh, the British uh, you know tend to. Also, over at uh, the Facebook page, there was an interesting discussion about uh, non-revving. So this is a little bit of shop talk for those of you that may be in the industry. So non-revenue travel, there are some standards, and they were uh, uh, lessened up a number of years ago. It used to be when you were an employee working for the airlines, you had to kind of dress up to travel and, and that was lessened up a number of years ago. But apparently there is one little thing uh, that's still there. They do not want you to wear sleepwear. Um, now as a paying passenger, it, it's not a big deal, but if you were non-revving on an airline, I guess there is this little stipulation that they want you to actually have regular clothes and not sleepwear. Well, something in a gray area is what some folks might wear is a do-rag or a head wrap. And uh, this particular story allegedly happened in New Orleans uh, where someone was uh, going up to board the flight. They looked down and noticed that it was a non-revenue passenger that was wearing a do-rag and they were, uh, allegedly denied boarding. Um, I'm not sure that they were allowed to fly. Um, and apparently it was a supervisor that denied the boarding, um, which was kind of eye eyeball raising to me. Um, you know, there's a lot of comments back and forth about the situation. Of course, none of us were probably there to witness it exactly what happened and went down. Um, Oh, you know, maybe comment or send me a, a DM if this is something that uh, you heard of or uh, et cetera, wink, wink. Some more non-revenue uh, discussions. So a number of years ago during the pandemic, um, specifically Delta decided to get rid of their Boeing 777s. They had a, a fleet of them that they would put on their long route. So the longest routes that Delta flies, think Atlanta to South Africa, think um, Atlanta to South Korea, think um, Los Angeles to Australia. Well, they retired these longer range Boeing 777s they had, and currently the longer range kind of flagship of the fleet is the Airbus A350 that they have on those fleets. Well, technically the A350 in certain conditions has a shorter range than the Airbus, I'm sorry, than the Boeing 777. This has turned into, and one person called it meat ridding or meat riding, which is a new term to me. I had not quite heard that before. And I'd be curious to know if that is a, um, uh, aviation term, I, I, I need to do a little more Googling because that wasn't a new one to me. And literally someone continued to complain in this group about the Airbuses um, because, well, let me, let me clarify a little more. So what, what'll happen in this situation, let's say that an Airbus on a route, um, that they're not going to just simply cancel the flight. To What they have to do then is take weight off of the flight. It could be also that there is more cargo on the plane and cargo, revenue cargo is making the plane go and these non-revenue passengers uh, are having to not, or are being denied boarding um, so that the plane can make the route and, you know, uh, get to the destination. 
So these non-revenue passengers are getting bumped off the flight to take another flight later. And uh, some of them, in some of these cases, they are going over to United and doing a Zed fare uh, in order to, uh, on a Boeing plane <laughs> that can make a similar route. Um, and so the, again, this, this meat riding or what have you is, um, is interesting to me as an, as an aviation geek uh, to watch and, and kind of sit back and, and eat some popcorn as uh, uh, you know, employees kind of um, uh, talk about each other. Again, if this is uh, something you're interested in, I'll be glad to talk more one-on-one -on -one with you or, or uh, even explain more if, if this is something that you want to chat more about. Uh, otherwise, just you know, keep scrolling. Well, actually, uh, something that was a little more, I guess, uh, front of the house, have you? Um, American Airlines, and I believe this lady actually worked for a feeder carrier, which actually came up earlier in the discussion because allegedly American American may be trying to bring all of the carriers together. We shall see. But uh, there was, I'll call her a spicy flight attendant. She was going on social media and saying, for example, uh, you could um, bribe your way into first class with money. So maybe you are on a plane sitting in coach. There's a first class seat available. She was claiming that you could bribe the flight attendant with money or other things to get to first class. And she was doing this in an official American Airlines uniform with her official American Airlines name tag. Well, it didn't take long for official American Airlines to distance themselves. And I believe she is no longer employed there. Not smart to do things like that. Or devil's advocate here, was she doing this on purpose? Because this got a lot of attention. I don't know. But you've got a link to that, to the whole story, to her picture. And uh, I don't know where she's up to these days. Maybe she's on OnlyFans, who knows? Bless her heart. So again, that's part two of the episode. Thanks again for all of your listening. If you didn't catch part one, uh, it was posted a little bit earlier. Have a great weekend. Try to do a, another episode, but uh, like I said, next weekend we are off. So I may not make it uh, another one for a couple of weeks, but uh, you know, watch the Facebook page. I'm trying to keep it up more up to date and talk to you guys soon. Happy 2024.